Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be talking about how artists use uh, photos and drawing as reference, as inspiration, uh, when they're working on illustrations. And what I've got here uh, is an old 19th century uh, drawing of a grasshopper that I'm going to be using as inspiration for drawing a kind of futuristic uh, sci-fi vehicle. Uh, and what I'm going to do uh, at first, all in time lapse, is sort of sketch out the basic shape uh, as if I were going to just draw a grasshopper, and then all in real time I'm going to show you how I would transform that, use this as inspiration for my futuristic vehicle. All right, so I've got the basic lines in place, and uh, what I'm going to do right now is show how I might use you know, sort of break away from the uh, existing anatomy of the grasshopper and begin to play around with it so as to uh, transform these different things into more like mechanical uh, robotic legs that would, uh, you know, a little bit like those uh, imperial walkers in uh, The Empire Strikes Back, that uh, uh, one of these vehicles that can uh, move itself across the surface of a planet by way of legs. Of course, you're going to have six legs uh, here. and So you can see me sort of altering the shape uh, of what you see there, which is more organic, and trying to uh, gradually um, make these uh, lines straighter. Now, towards the end, I'm probably going to pull out the ruler and really start, you know, um, tightening up these lines. But for now, I'm going to do it all um, sort of freehand. And one of the interesting things is, you know, if you tried to just sort of imagine uh, a futuristic vehicle, you might not come up with these same areas of where the joints uh, would be. Uh, and I think in a certain way, even when you are breaking away from uh, the uh, anatomy of the actual insect, some of that original anatomy stays there and it somehow brings a, a level of uh, authenticity to your uh, drawing, you know, because the this the anatomy of the uh, grasshopper has evolved uh, to sort of make sense uh, as something that works, you know, in the real world. And if you base your futuristic sci-fi drawing on the grasshopper's anatomy, it also seems to make sense, you know, it seems... Now one thing I'm going to do is this one, you sort of see these legs uh, off uh, to the other side. I think I'm going to try to come at this from a different angle, and uh, I'm going to suggest that the the other side of, you know, the leg on the other side of the vehicle is um, more on the same level, you know what I mean? It's that you can see it over there just on the other side rather than having it up and uh, getting a slightly elevated point of view there. Um, so that shows you, I don't know if I need to go into f full uh, detail on that, but one thing that I think you w have to start thinking of is if, if I'm going to transform this into a vehicle, um, wouldn't there be sort of like a gap here where this thing connects uh, through the uh, exterior of the ship. And so what I'm doing here is I'm starting starting to imagine a kind of uh, more uh, angular looking upper surface uh, of the vehicle that could come across, let's say, and uh, that there'd be a lower surface that these legs uh, are attached to. So. I might even break away, and you know, when you're when you're using something as inspiration, that doesn't mean that you stick with it um, line by line. You really do. Uh, you sort of start with the grasshopper shape as your, uh, you know, as your jumping off point, and then you might decide to alter the um, contour. Like right, I'm doing here is I'm sort of raising up this um, front section. You know, in a way you don't want it to look too much like a grasshopper, it might be a little um, too obvious what you used as inspiration. So I'm sort of breaking away from that. In fact, I'm going to get rid of this uh, antenna idea. And uh, let's say that this is where the cockpit would be. Um, a little bit like a World War II fighter jet or something like that. And I'll go ahead and do a sort of snub-nosed uh, front right there. But what I was about to get to is that the, I imagine these uh, legs here in the front, uh, if indeed they 
are connecting to the ship would not connect right on that upper surface but into some sort of more mechanical area here at the bottom. And uh, again, this idea of these um, different joints in the legs, you know, if I had just sort of tried to do that off the top of my head, I don't know if I would have come up with these same uh, locations and, and angles for where all these joints would be. Now this, I have to say that these, th this idea of the feet really is sort of a, a ripoff of the, uh, the walkers uh, from, the, uh, from Empire Strikes Bang. But it, you know what? I think I can get away with it. If the lawyers get on the phone <laughs> from the Star Wars people, I will change the way the feet look. But there was something very sort of practical looking about those, uh, those big solid feet. Uh, that I thought I would uh, get in there. Now, I figure if this uh, upper surface here has uh, is going to be a little more like clean lines, this lower surface beneath could be where there's you see a little more of the machinery and so forth. You know what I mean? Um, so th there's going to be more detail down here, a little more uh, rugged um, nuts and bolts, that kind of thing. And I, you know, I'm not really committing to it completely right now, but I'm just sort of putting in the basics of what I might do there. Now again, um, you, have to, you have to start thinking about the, the logistics of what a vehicle would require. For example, they need a way of getting in, <laughs> getting into the cockpit, right? And uh, so I thought maybe I could uh, introduce a door right here, some sort of uh, portal. I don't know how they get, maybe they can step here, right? Maybe this is designed if you step on here and this allows you to kind of hoist yourself up uh, into the uh, porthole that enters in. I suppose I could have had this thing just open up, right? <laughs> Come on, Krilly, think it through. But yeah, basically the idea is that starting off, you know, when you're using reference, you're not, um, it can be just a jumping off point. You don't. Uh, allow yourself to be beholden to uh, every single aspect of uh, the grasshopper's anatomy. I mean, it's up to you. You know, you can you can make it as close to a grasshopper or as far away from a grasshopper as you like. Um, this is where the, the sort of inspiration kicks in. Um, but I am I do like the idea of these sort of legs being based on the actual. Uh, grasshopper anatomy. Sorry if this is getting a little too far off to the uh, front of the video frame here. Hopefully it's still in there. Um, then you can start to have fun. Like what if it was a little bit like, uh, you know how you have a bombardier or something in one of those old military uh, planes? What if there was uh, some place back here where you know, if this is does have some military aspect to it, what if there's a place back here where the guy sits and uh, has a a gun of some sort, you know, that he uh, can fire mechanically to defend anyone, you know, coming after them from behind. And so little by little you begin to really break away from uh, that original inspiration and start to come up with your own uh, design, but I think by having it uh, initially based on something rather than just pulled out of thin air, there is a, a level of, I don't know if authenticity, but sort of naturalness to it. It seems to sort of work. You sort of believe it. You believe that those legs would move uh, something of that size. You know, there's sort of a logic to it. Um, so I think maybe that's about enough uh, of me doing it all in real time. I'm going to tighten up a lot of these lines, add more details, do all of that uh, in time lapse, and then I will be back to maybe start doing some of the, some of the inking uh, and uh, talk about what I would do at that point uh, in the drawing process.
Okay, so now that I've sort of worked out the basic uh, details of it, uh, I'm going to come in and start inking things and uh, maybe talk a little bit about uh, my approach to inking. Uh, it can be a trick to do inking with a ruler. Uh, a lot of people will just sort of stay away from it altogether. Uh, but, you know, if you've got a, a flat surface that touches uh, the paper and a sort of a rounded surface on the top, I would flip it over so that uh, the the ruler is not really completely flat on the paper, it's elevated a little bit. Uh, and then you can avoid um, having the ink actually touch the ruler, which really very quickly gets super messy, if indeed you want this kind of straight line uh, look, which uh, you don't necessarily uh, have to want in your illustration. I think some people might go for a more organic look. I think because I want this to be sort of futuristic looking, I'm going to be uh, trading off uh, back and forth between using the ruler and doing freehand. Generally for like shorter lines, I'll switch to uh, uh, going freehand. But I'm even for like a section like this, I'm being careful to sort of avoid uh, putting that ruler right on top of there for fear of it smearing, you know. Um, but uh, I can maybe get over here and uh, get a second line in there. Um, basically, um, the real point of this video was to show you how, how you can start with one thing as inspiration and really move quite far away from it. You can see that uh, I began to feel that these legs uh, th that are so thin on the um, actual grasshopper seemed a little too uh, thin to support a <laughs> big metallic, uh, you know, uh, futuristic vehicle of this kind, and so that's why I started coming in and sort of thickening these things up a little bit. Um, and I pr suppose the last thing that I'm going to do once I've finished this inking process is to uh, bring in maybe a little touch of marker, possibly watercolor. I'd like, like to see if I can get the whole thing done with marker. Uh, just to finish off the illustration. But you can sort of see the pace at which I'm uh, inking here, uh, taking my time. Sometimes when you see uh, a video like this and, and everything gets time-lapsed, you may have the idea that people are really speeding through this stuff in an unbelievable, uh, unbelievably fast way. But uh, the truth is, at least for me, um, I'm taking my time. I'm not trying to, you know, there's no prize for speed uh, um, when you're <laughs> inking, certainly. You don't want to sort of mess it up at this stage in the process after you've put all this time into working out the basic structure of your illustration. And I suppose that gets us to where uh, I can go ahead and finish up the inking, maybe come back in with a bit of marker um, to uh, finalize the illustration, and then I'll be back with a few final words. All right, well, that's my video on uh, showing you the difference between, you know, simply copying a photo or a drawing versus using it as inspiration, as a kind of jumping off point that uh, starts your illustration and may well lead you to something radically different uh, from what you started with. But I think it's time for me to say thank you to anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books, like The Realism Challenge, my book on hyper-realistic illustrations, also The Two Pencil Method, my book that shows you how you can make drawings like this with just uh, two different pencils. And finally, Mastering Manga, uh, my book on how to draw in a manga style. I really cannot say thank you enough to those of you who choose to support me by uh, picking up any of those books, or indeed any of the other books I've made over the years. But I think it's time for me to lay down this pen. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.